Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Swiss. Happy Monday. Quick recap of yesterday. Uh, break even day, minus 0.21 units. So I lost two tenths of a unit. Top bets did well, four and one on the top bets. Uh, top bets did well in college football too, four and two. Uh, yeah, four and two on Saturday. So those of you that subscribe just for the top bets, you had a good weekend. I had a pretty mediocre weekend. So it all comes down to Monday night football. I need to have a big Monday in order to keep this streak alive. If I don't have a big night tonight, it'll officially be my first losing NFL week of the season. But you know what? It's probably not even smart to think like that. Take it one game at a time. So let's just focus on this game. Packers on the road in Vegas to play the Raiders. Line is Vegas minus two. Raiders were actually catching two at home earlier in the week. So move four points. Total sitting at 45 and a half, up from 43 and a half. Let's roll. Welcome to the Swiss. The Swiss. Swiss. Hey, get the Swiss. So the early action came in on Green Bay in this one, but it's been all Raiders since then. Like I said earlier, line moved a full four points. We're now at Raiders minus two. Public's about split even. Sharp action definitely on the Raiders. So I know it seems like this game was a month ago, but Packers last game was actually the beatdown they took from the Lions 34-20 on Thursday night football. And they had no answers for the Lions pass rush. Four of the five starting Green Bay Packers offensive linemen allowed four plus pressures in that game. Jordan Love was sacked five times in that game. Uh, and here's the scary part. Detroit only blitzed three times the entire game. Lions pass rush was generating pressure at a 43.6% rate, only rushing four guys on Green Bay for the most part. That's bad. And it's weird because entering that game against the Lions, the Packers pass protection had been solid. They were towards the top of the NFL in pressure rate, adjusted sack rate, pass blocking efficiency. They got exposed badly by the Lions. Let's be fair to the Packers though. They were missing three starters in their offensive line in that game. And the good news is two of those three are back or most likely back, I should say. Jenkins and Zach Tom, left guard and right tackle, both most likely playing. Obviously, Bakhtiari out for the season. So there may be reason to have some hope that the Packers' pass protection is going to come back in this one. They're playing the Raiders. Raiders haven't been generating sacks this year. They're just 27th in adjusted sack rate, 29th in the NFL, averaging just 1.75 sacks per game. But look at their pressure numbers. Raiders are 6th in the NFL in pressure rate. And what do I always say about pressure numbers? The sacks are coming. So the Raiders haven't been racking up sacks, but according to the pressure numbers, they're going to start at some point. 49ers were towards the bottom of the NFL in sacks entering last night. So the, if the pressure numbers are there, the sacks are eventually going to come. And this is extremely important in this matchup because Jordan Love has been terrible under pressure this year. Check these numbers out. So when Jordan Love has a clean pocket, right, when he's kept clean, he's 13th in yards per attempt, 19th in PFF passer grade, and 11th in passer rating. When he's pressured, 32nd in yards per attempt, 31st in PFF passer grade, 33rd in passer rating. And it definitely doesn't help knowing that Jordan Love's run support has basically been non-existent. Uh, Packers run game, 25th in DVOA, 31st in adjusted line yards, and 29th in yards per carry by running backs. Now, the Raiders' run defense is not great. 20th in yards per carry allowed, 19th in DVOA, 24th in adjusted line yards. So maybe the Packers are finally able to run the ball a little bit. But the thing I noticed about the Raiders' run defense is... All the damage was basically done in one game against Buffalo, which was a bad spot for the Raiders, by the way. They had just come off that upset win over Denver, flew across the country to Buffalo to play a pissed off Bills team who had just lost to the Jets. It was a bad spot. Uh, in that game, the Bills had 30 carries, 178 yards rushing on 5.93 yards per carry. But the other three games for the Raiders, teams combined for 3.7 yards per carry. Now, they've played some weak rushing attacks, but... Look, I don't think the Raiders' run defense is good. I just don't think it's quite as bad as you would think. Bottom line, even if we think the Packers are going to be able to run the ball a little bit in this game, Jordan Love still needs to produce in this matchup if the Packers want a shot at winning. On the other side, we got the Raiders' offense, and analytically, they've been miserable <laughs> this season. Uh, DVOA-wise, the Raiders are 31st overall, 32nd rushing, and 26th passing. The run game specifically is a problem for the Raiders. Josh Jacobs averaging just 0.3 yards before contact this season. That's third worst in the NFL amongst qualified running backs. Raiders are 26th in adjusted line yards. The offensive line just is not creating space in the run game for the Raiders. And they've been trying to fix it. The Raiders have run a jumbo package on 9.1% of their offensive snaps. Jumbo package means they brought in an extra offensive lineman, six offensive linemen. So the Raiders have run that on 9.1% of their offensive snaps. That's the most in the NFL by far. The next closest is Buffalo at 4.9%. 
So the Raiders are trying to fix it. It's just not working. In my opinion, this is the last shot as far as the Raiders run game goes. Home on Monday Night Football against a Packers defense that's been struggling to stop the run. If the Raiders can't get Josh Jacobs going in this one, it's time to officially declare it's not working. Green Bay's defense is allowing 4.5 yards per carry on the season. That's 23rd in the NFL. They're 25th in run defense DVOA, 26th in adjusted line yards. And the Raiders need this matchup in particular because the Lions just averaged 2.12 yards before contact on Green Bay in their last game that's the fourth most allowed in a single game by any team this season so again i'm going to repeat myself i'm going to reiterate this if the raiders can't run the ball in this game it's officially past the point of a slow start it's not working josh mcdaniels they just can't run the ball as far as the passing offense with jimmy garoppolo i mean they haven't been good in that department either uh extremely predictable just 8.1 percent of jimmy garoppolo's pass attempts have traveled 20 plus yards well below the league average just 39 percent of garoppolo's pass attempts have gone outside the numbers just 23rd amongst qualified quarterbacks and all of their targets go to the same three guys Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Jacoby Myers. Those three guys account for 77.1% of the Raiders' targets this year, even though they just signed Hunter Renfro to a long-term deal, they signed Austin Hooper in the offseason, and they drafted Michael Mayer out of Notre Dame. Josh McDaniels is running the most predictable offense of all time right now. Short passes over the middle to the same exact guys. Now I have a positive angle and a negative angle for the Raiders' passing offense here. We'll start with the positive. Uh, the Packers run a ton of zone coverage. Green Bay lives in zone. 72.5% of Green Bay's defensive snaps this year have been in zone coverage. That's the second highest in the NFL. Look at the Raiders' passing numbers versus man and versus zone. Against man coverage, Raiders are 28th and 31st in passer rating in net yards per attempt. Against zone, those ranks jump to 18th and 12th. That's the good news. Now here's the bad news. We just mentioned how Jimmy Garoppolo does not throw the ball to the sidelines much. Packers' pass defense has been awful defending on the sidelines, but actually solid over the middle. Packers pass defense DVOA by zone, 28th on the left sideline, 20th on the right, 5th in the middle. And remember how I said Garoppolo hasn't been throwing the ball downfield at all, pass attempts 20 plus yards. Well, Green Bay is 24th in DVOA versus the deep pass, actually 14th versus the short pass. So the Packers pass defense, even though it's not good, against short passes over the middle, they actually are pretty good. And I know a lot of people are looking this at this saying, oh, Jimmy G's going to carve this Packers pass defense up. They're terrible against the pass. I'm not so sure about that. Betting spot wise, the advantage goes to the Packers. Uh, not only do they have an extra three days rest, but they're coming off a game where they got absolutely humiliated on national TV and their betting value is at an all time low. Raiders took a loss also, but they had their backup quarterback in, and then they almost came back on the Chargers. Before we get to the pick, I got an underdog pick him in from Prop Beaver, who killed it yesterday. He went 8-2 yesterday. He made a fortune. Um, so this is what he sent in. Christian Watson, higher than 42.5 receiving yards. Daniel Carson, higher than 6 kicking points. Quay, oh, another kicker prop from Prop Beaver. <laughs> Quay Walker, higher than nine tackles plus assists. That's a three pick, so it pays out six times. If you don't have an underdog fantasy account, it's available in any state highlighted in this map. So if you're in one of these states, go to underdog fantasy. The, you can go to the website or you could download the app. When you're making your account, make sure you use the promo code BET. Get a $100 deposit bonus match. Deposit $100, they will give you a free $100 to play with. Well, there's one last thing I forgot to mention. Josh McDaniels. Uh, as the Raiders head coach, 1-3 against the spread and 0-4 and straight up in primetime games. I got to roll with the pack here. Season of love, baby. Give me the Packers plus two. I'm also going to take the under at 45 and a half. Public's heavy on the over on this one. They've bet it up from 43 and a half to 45 and a half. So I'm going to take the under. Uh, Packers plus two, under 45 and a half. Let's go, Jordan Love. If you want my top bets, parlays of the day, if you want to join the Discord. Oh, it'll be a same game parlay because it's uh, Monday Night Football. So if you're interested in any of that, head over to kylekerms.com. Monday Night Football, let's end week five on a positive note. Remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.